What's going on America? Today we're gonna to talk about why your starting salary is so important. I did the video recently and I saw a lot of people were shocked at the damaging effects of a long-term layoff and what it can do to your future income for decades. So what I'm gonna do is address that and break down to you why layoffs can affect your income 20, 30, 40 years in the future. And I'm also going to address why your starting income is so important and why no one actually tells you about this. And I'm gonna to explain to what happened to me. If this is your first time here, what I want you to do is to enroll in 30 days to 2500 and the Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. These two tools will strengthen your mindset and teach you how to make some money. All right, so let's kind of go at the beginning. Right now in society, we have many people that feel that if you work 40 hours a week, you deserve what's called a living wage. You should be able to work one job, pay all of your bills, and have a little money left over. I'm here to tell you that's not how the system works. This is what determines your income when the government isn't intervening. Your income is determined by how easy it is or how hard it is to replace you. If you are a Super Bowl winning quarterback making 30 million a year, there ain't that many dudes on the planet who could be a Super Bowl winning quarterback. That's why they make so much money. And compare and contrast this to someone working at Burger King or McDonald's making seven to $10 per hour. So this is how it has been for a long time. I don't see it changing anytime soon. As much as many people want to imply that if you work 40 hours, you deserve a living wage. I'm going to explain why that system can work in your favor if you understand it, because if everything was fair, regardless of how hard you worked or regardless how much of a genius you were, you would get the same money as everyone else. And that ain't how America built. America's built on if you can make it, if you can build it, you can make a lot of money. And that is the American way and that ain't gonna change no time soon. So now that we know what your income is based upon, we're gonna talk about what doesn't happen for you. When I was in high school and I took the ASFAB, the military test to determine where they could place you, the recruiter told me, you can pick any job in the military. I didn't understand. I understood what he said. You could pick any job on this list, but I didn't understand in the context what he was saying, that if I wanted to pick the nuclear medicine option in the military, I could have had that. I didn't understand that. I had no one to guide me. And this is what happens to you, America. You have a situation where there's no one to say, hey, you should do this or you should do that because the benefits will be X, Y, and Z. I didn't have that. So I just literally went, dope, and I wanna to go to Hawaii. I could have picked a totally different career specialty if I had inform if I was informed, if I had someone in my corner. So this is one of the things that most of you don't have most of you because let me go ahead and explain to you what happened your parents your father thought your mother was cute they got together they started having relations bam you came out then your dad had to get a job any job would do and this is what starts the process and this is what starts the syndrome of generational poverty or generational low income we doing what we gotta do, man. We, we out here, we making money, taking care of little baby bamboo. This is one of the, you know, and I talk about this on Savage Finance. Uh, I talk about one of the biggest mistakes people make is not paying attention to their career. This is one of the worst financial mistakes you can make. And so many people do it because no one is saying, hey, you should be doing this or you should be looking at this. No one is saying this because Hey, you got a job, you're a hardworking man, a hardworking woman, you're paying your bills, you're living your life. I'm here to tell you that's the incorrect way about going about doing this. And like you, I was on that same income track. I will explain what happened to me. I went to the military, 
my MOS was 92 Bravo Medical Technologist, and I was able to exit the military and get a job doing that in civilian life. And this put me at what would be middle class income because I went ahead and looked it up because it's, it's been so many years that I've looked this up. But essentially, they're making like sixty to eighty five thousand dollars a year. And that's where I would have been. But I got knocked off of that track because just like most many of you, your life has been disrupted. And I suffered a serious financial crisis. Ninety seven, ninety eight and ninety nine. So I fell off of that career track into low income hell. And one of the things that happened was I suffered. I suffered. I was homeless. I wrecked my car. And also when you come out of your social economic circle, you lose friends because people like to network and hang around people who are on their similar levels or a little bit above. So I lost friends and it was a really, really terrible time. Now, during this stage, and this was and this is was could be very dangerous because I have fell out of my social economic class and it is really hard to climb back in. I want you to think of you going over a waterfall and I don't care how hard you swim, how fast you swim, the waterfall, the force of the power of the water just takes you over and you, you just can't defeat it. It's so powerful, these overwhelming forces. And that's what it's like once you fall out of your social economic class to climb back in. But I'm going to tell you how I did it and some tricks and tactics that maybe you can use. So once you fall out, there is the mental aspect. You mentally, you don't feel really good about yourself. Your self-esteem takes a hit. Your income takes a hit. All of these bad, nasty things happen. And also the mental. This is why I'm giving you guys the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success, because the mental mindset is so crucial because literally if you fall out of your socioeconomic class, you're going to have to fight tooth and nail just to get back in because of all of these forces that will conspire against you. So I fell out and I suffered for about three years. I went through a lot of crazy stuff. Now, I started to self-educate and I started to read books and I got myself some courses that changed my perspective. And I used to work for this company called Voice Dream, which was T-Mobile, which now I think it's T-Mobile now. It was Voice Dream. It was Powertel back in the day. And I was a salesman. I was making like 15 bucks an hour with my commission, which is like $28,000 a year. And because I had experienced this low income hell, I thought that was pretty good but it really, it wasn't even $30,000 a year. And part of your orientation that happens with your income is once you, know, you get to what you feel is a good income, you become comfortable. And this is dangerous. This is really, really dangerous because I, you know, I was making less money than I made when I was working in the hospital but I was making more money than I was working all of these crappy little jobs because one of the things that happens to you is your social network changes. And as I talked about in the previous video, how I got one of the best jobs I ever had in my life, it was through my social network. I didn't even have to imply. Do barely even looked at my resume. I was just boom. It's like, okay, you've got X amount of leads. You got this going on. Welcome aboard. It was just that easy once you have a social network to operate in. So I was down and out. And also I need to tell you why your starting salary is so important. You, when you went for your job, sometimes people who are interviewing you will ask you point blank, what did you used to make? And this is about the habits. This is about habits. So if you were making like, you know, $40,000 a year, they may offer you 42 to 44,000 because see, they're trying to get you as cheap as possible. Your goal is you're trying to make as much money as possible. They're trying to get you as cheap as possible. And they will blatantly ask you, what did you used to make? Now, here is where it gets very, very dangerous. You don't know what you don't know. So let's say you're 22 years old, you're out of college, your first job, 
and your starting income is $30,000, right? So what you're going to do is work for the next 40 years, but you started off at 30 and you just go ahead and do the math and calculate what your income will be with one to 2% cost of living adjustments for the next 40 years. You're going to end up at 40 something. So you're going to spend 40 years working for working out from 30 to like 40 something, 40 years. And this is how you get trapped because you didn't know what you didn't know. Like you start off at that income, you're going to probably make 1.2 to 1.6 million your total lifetime. And that sounds good, but you got to do everything off of that 1.2 to 1.6 million. You got to buy a house, you got to drive cars, you got to do everything. And essentially what happens is you get stuck. Now, this is something else that happens. Okay. You start off at 30, you're making forties. Once you hit 45, your income starts to drop. And once you hit 50, you start to to run into age discrimination, where if you're in a company and you're getting your corporate ticket punched and you're climbing up, you're good. But if you fall out of that social economic circle, it's going to be hard for you to get back in. The older you get, the more experience you have, the less people want to hire you, the less people want to give you a shot. So here you are, you start off at 30, you're making 40 something, then you're like 50 and now you can't find a job or only jobs that you can find will pay significantly less than what you used to make. And this is the trap because no one tells you that this cycle, I'm here to tell you, this is what's going to happen. If you are not fighting hard as you can against this, this is going to happen to you. You've seen it happen to your uncle. You've seen it happen to your daddy. They were doing fine. They were doing okay. Then they got old and it got really hard for them to get a job or it got really hard for them to advance. It got really hard for them to make money. And this is why I tell you to start a business because this is what happened to me. And it, it, it's, it's a strange little journey because I got knocked off. I was working all of these substandard low uh, economic jobs. And then I got laid off from Powertel and I went home and I came up with a written plan. I knew my issue was low income and I knew there was jobs on monster.com I could do, but I didn't have a, re I didn't have a reference. So in a flash of brilliance, I started to cheat. I created my own reference, Mr. Patel, and it worked. I applied for jobs that I knew that I can do. I just didn't have an experience. And when they called my reference, they asked me two questions. Did he work there and would you hire him again? That was my reference check. I thought it was more involved than that, but that was all they asked. And I was like, yes, he worked there. And, you know, and I gave myself a good reference and everything. My Indian accent was on point way back then. And I got the job. And I started off at $38,000, which was higher than my hospital salary. And this is really important. So I went there and I had an agenda. I wasn't going to be there for the next 20 years. I was like, I'm going to go here. I'm going to learn what I need to learn. Then I'm going to bounce because the lesson that I learned at Powertel, which is T-Mobile now that you can do a good job, but hey, for some other reason, we can get rid of you just like that. So I put myself in the position where I was going to fire myself. So I was at Renegrade eight months. Then I went to Panel Systems Unlimited where I started off at $60,000. So I went from making 15 bucks an hour to making $38,000 a year to making $60,000 in eight months because I understood the importance of income because I knew what my problem was. I had an income problem. I didn't have a talent problem. I didn't have a work ethic problem. I had an income problem. And then I stayed there eight months. Then I bounced to business environments using my network and I got my first six figure job. So this is how I worked my way out of low income hell. It was a journey. It was a process, but it was a deliberate plan because I'm here to impress upon you how important income is. Income is very important. 
and like I said, the Savage Finance, I have a video that this is one of the biggest mistakes that most people make, that they don't put a priority on getting a good career. And you know, there's socialism, there's uh, s tribalism, there's other many dynamics that come in. I'm not gonna get into that. But that's how I escaped because once, if I had stayed where I was today, I would probably be making 10 to 15 bucks an hour because that was the track that I was put on and I took myself out that track because I fought fought hard as I could. I fought really, really hard because I just knew that I didn't want to be there. And see America, this is what's about to happen to many of you. Because of this recession, you know, I know there are people whispering in your ear, it's gonna be a V-shaped recovery. It's not gonna happen. And I'm gonna tell you why it's not gonna happen. 40% of the small businesses that closed for the pandemic are not gonna reopen. And many bigger businesses are gonna file bankruptcy and also close. So we're going to be in a position where we could lose 40% to maybe 50% of our businesses, which is really scary when you think about it. 50% of our businesses, you know, all, all, most of them are gonna be small mom and pops, but they're gonna go away and unemployment is gonna remain high. And this is why I urge you, I impress upon you, download 30 days to 2,500, Go ahead and enroll in the hustler's mindset. Take those courses, do the work because you're going to have to fight for your income. And it's going to be a tough, tough fight because you have many things conspiring. Because first thing is you don't know what you don't know. That's the first thing. You don't know that this cycle and it's a predictable cycle that's going to happen. That if you start off out of college with low income, more than likely, this is going to be your career trajectory. Because one of the things that happened to me when I got to my six figure income, I've not made less than six figures since that point because it's a habit. It is my social economic habit. And this is one of the things, cause you know, even when I'm kind of coasting, I still make pretty good money because I've climbed up the social economic ladder and I've created a position for myself through service to you guys and you know, creating courses and things. So this is why your money habit is so important because what will happen is you will go ahead and create a low income money habit and become comfortable with that habit. You hear what I'm saying, America? You feel me? You, you hear what I'm saying? You will become comfortable. Now, here's something that's really, really bad. Let's say you're in that low income habit and then you get laid off. And let's say you're 38 years old and you get laid off for six months to a year. So by the time you re-enter the workforce at 39, you're gonna make less money. So you're gonna be in a situation where you're making less money than you previously did and the money you made before wasn't that great. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna see a steady erosion of your income. You're gonna have inflation, you're gonna have, and also you're gonna have a hostile corporate environment. For the companies that make it through this pandemic, for the companies that are well positioned, well suited, and have money in the bank, they're gonna be picky. They're gonna be hostile. You think working environments are crazy now? You ain't seen nothing yet. So you're gonna have that to contend with because they're gonna know that you, giving you a job, there ain't that many places you can go to get a job. So they, they're gonna be like that pretty prom girl. They're gonna be like, hey, I can date it, I can deal, I can go with, I can go to the prom with anyone I want to because I'm that girl. That's how these employers are gonna be acting. So you're gonna be facing ageism, you're gonna be facing uh, eight, uh, certain types of discrimination, you're gonna be locked out because the older and more experienced you become, the less that they're gonna want you. And you could find yourself literally working for $20,000 a year after you upped yourself to 40 something and you fell off. This is the damaging effects of long-term layoffs. All it takes is six months. It doesn't take like years and years. Like literally, when I was in the military, they had a policy that the most leave you could take unless it was terminal leave was two months because you would lose your military bearings. 
So one of the things that happens to you when you're laid off is you lose a lot of your good habits. Right now, you at home with Big Booty Betty, Sexy Susan, y'all having sex all day, doing double monkey backflips all over the living room, enjoying yourself on this enhanced unemployment, then one day it's going to be over. But at this point, you're, and this is one of the things, the employers, and this is one of the hardest things to happen, like when you experience a long-term layoff, employers don't want you. They don't want to hire you. They don't want to give you a chance. They don't want to give you a shot because they know that your work ethic has degraded. You know, I know that many people will be working from home, but right now there's a crazy environment. We have a lot of people who are working at home who've never worked at home before, don't have a dedicated home office, got the dog barking, got the kids crying. So they have not created a, a work at home environment to make them productive. So they're going to lose massive productivity. They can lose 50 to 70% of their productivity working at home and the companies know this. So it's going to be really, really a battle. It's going to be an economic battle for you guys to climb back up the ladder and these jobs are going to be hostile. So what does one do? Number one, you realize the game. Most folks don't even know that it is a game. Most folks don't even know about this predictable cycle, but you can Google it and you can study income ranges and what happens when you hit your mid forties to fifties and how you start to come down. And that's really bad because you weren't in a good place to begin because the average American has not had a wage increase for about 40 years. Like the last three, four years, wages were creeping up, but you were third, you were 40 years behind. So four years are not going to eradicate 40 years of economic damage. In 1983, I used to work for a company called Sign Builders. You know how much money I made per hour? I made $6.50. What is the minimum wage today? It's $7.25. So essentially, I was making, if you were to compare it, I was making close to like 12 bucks an hour way back then. And the wage is still the same because the dollar had more buying power back then. This is just to show you that the low income trajectory is alive and well. And if you're on that track, it is going to determine who you marry. It's going to determine where you live. It's going to determine what house you can buy, if you can be a house, because once you're in a certain low income sector, buying a house, that, that's just a, that's a fantasy. That's just a dream. And one of the things is, how do you combat this? First of all, you need to know where you are. You need to know where you stand economically. You know, I know there's a lot of dudes out there, I like 75K, I'm good, you know, I got my own place, I got me a little car. Really, do you have a car payment? Do you have debt? Do you have student loan debt? Do you have credit? You ain't really good. You're not really good because if 50 to 75% of your income isn't disposable, you're not good. You're trapped. You're overburdened because of the American credit indoctrination system. You're not free. So one of the things that you should do is do a deep analysis of where you are from an income perspective. And then you should go to Glassdoor and look at what other people are doing. And then also, this is one of the things that I like to practice is called the do more principle. I know there are many internet gurus who are like, hey, look, you can make $20, $30,000 a month with only 10 hours a week. It, it ain't true. I'm just here to tell you that. So what you got to do is keep your job, start you a side business and increase your income. It's going to be hard. It's going to be really, really hard because you were not socialized or trained to do this. And you're going to seem weird to your friends because you've got this side business. You're out here doing all these things and your friends and family, they're looking at you like you're an alien and you're always talking about money. You're always talking about how to advertise, how to hustle. You're going to have to keep your old friends, keep your old friends, go to the barbecues, go to the birthday parties, you know, enjoy them, but don't talk business with them. 
they're not going to understand your new friends that you will get once you start joining these Facebook groups, start getting into this is people you need to talk to because your old friends and family, they're not going to understand. They just gonna think you weird. They don't think you're strange, but you should have written goals to double and triple your income. Now, remember where I was in 1987, 1988, I was where you are right now. So in time, you can turn everything around. It's just going and it's going to take some time. Let's just keep it a buck. Let, let me be honest with you. This is not going to happen overnight because you were indoctrinated for the low income track and for you to make changes and for you to begin to boom, you're going to have to start doing things very differently. You're going to have to think differently. You're going to have to behave in a different manner because once you go through this, cause like we, we've got 42 million people laid off and some of these people are going to suffer long term, the effects of long term layoffs, which is going to damage their future economic prospects for decades. Unless they watch this message and start practicing financial self-defense. And also I've got something that's coming up. I'm going to be doing this Wednesday night cause I got my other webinar Tuesday. I'm going to be doing this Tuesday night. I'm going to be offering a webinar that you will want to be there. If you're suffering this, this trap, if you're in this mess about how to make money from scratch and talk about the stuff that I have learned on my economic journey, because just like you, I didn't know any of this stuff. No one told me any of this. I didn't, I didn't come from money. I, I, didn't, I didn't know any of this stuff. And, but these are things I've learned upon the way because once I was able to elevate into higher income, I also elevated into a social economic class where people were able to teach me things and they had me more resources. So, you know, right now you, you, you got your best friends. That's cool. Love your friends, be close to your friends, but know that they can do nothing for you economically. So if you want to be part of this webinar, Go below and go ahead and buy into it. Yes, you, you got to buy into it. It's not going to be free. And I will see you guys Wednesday because we need to have this conversation because I, I see that literally half of the working American population is stuck in low income trajectory. And it's just going to get worse. The orbit's going to deteriorate. They're going to crash and burn. And it's just not going to get any better unless you make a decision to make it better, to turn things around, to begin to control your destiny. Like I did many years ago, because I remember the guy's like, I can get you like two more weeks and stuff. And I was like, mm, nah, I'll go now. And I began to start figuring out, and you, you're gonna need a written plan. You're gonna need a written plan. It's just none of this top of your head stuff. You're gonna need a plan that you sat down, thought about, what you want to do, how you want to do it. It has to be written down and you need to look at it frequently and also understand what is to come. Because if you don't start practicing financial self-defense, it's just going to get worse. The older that you become, it, it, it is, it's just not going to get any better. And it's about proximity and it's about elevating and it's about networking and it's about connections because it was a network that I built from those three jobs that got me the best job that I ever had in my life. It was my network. So understand that what's going to happen to you is going to be scary. It's going to be challenging unless you start fighting against it. I mean, you're going to put your dukes up and fight against it because this thing is going to be wicked, wickedly bad. All right. So once again, go ahead and get 30 days to 2,500. Go ahead, get the Hustler's Mindset, Pimp in Your Mind for Success, and sign up for this webinar that's going to be Wednesday at 7 p.m. And then also watch this another video. It's going to be right here. It's going to be right, right here.